Letter 2. Mirage Plateau, Occident. December 3rd, 1872. Most automatic and glottological sir. In my prevenient catechistical epistolographical missive, I essay to betray to you the chorography of the portion of the Ponod regions. My present elucubration shall be narratory of incidents in my chequered experience here. The caravan with which I traversed the Occidental Plateau reached its destination during the canicular days. Here, subsequent to the tarriance of several hebdomads, having an appetency to perlustrate the Hesperian domain still further, I entered into a pactitious agreement as peripatetic itinerant bibliopole. This was quite consentaneous with my nature, for, as you know, from my earliest juvenility I have been an ardent bibliophilist. Receiving a compendiarius prospectus, I prolated valedictions to my compagnon de voyage and inchoated solivagant perambulations. I now realised the fact that I was in a peregrine land, unkent, a fren, a peripatetic pedestrious viator, and apparently isolated with the salvo of a canine quadruped, whose mordacious, latent, lusorious, and venatic qualities are without parity. Securated and divested of his acharnement and curseness, he has been of great utility to me in his indigation of game in their latitations, latibulums, or hibernaculums, and for his pervigilations. By his Siberian latrations, he has kept in abeyance the whole noctivagant furious race, especially during the nocturnal hours. I onerated my dorsal part with a portmanteau for the vectitation of my habiliments. My humoral or acromural projecture I also onerated with an instrument consisting of ligneous stock and ferrous tube for the enication of alligerous and volant bipeds and those animals that are given to latrosony or a predaceous life. With this armature of accoutrements I took up my line of march in a septentrio occidental direction for distant Oppidan and Velatic communities. Amplifying claritude occupied the argent fields above. Human bellywine and other entities sustained the radiating caloric of Phoebus. Exhilarating euphony seemed to possess entire ubiquity. Under this buoyant, physical revivification, I transcended acclivities and declivities until the rayonant solar luminary had attained meridonial arduity, pouring down upon me his calefactory radiations so that my corporeal organisation was, in totality, subjected to redundant sudations, necessitating me to bring my bombicinous sudory into frequent requisition. After having participated in a collation, I submitted my corporeity to quiescence in a resupine position, which proved very acopic and effectuated an insuration of my physical energies, Having indulged in something like pandiculation, at least a sort of involuntary calisthenical exercise, I resumed the elongation of my pedaneous locomotion and protracted it well past crepuscule. Thus ended my primal day's itineration, varied by a multiplicity of peregrinities and neoteric occurrences. But oh, my defatigation and the turgescence of my pedalian extremities, the cataphractic epidermal integument abraded from my malleolar processes and calcaneal protrusions. My sinistral tendo Achilles and the dorsal part of my dextral hallux extensively vesicated and excoriated. But you know, the initial part of all enterprises is arduous. Subsequently to a very sumptuous vespertine repast, I intimated to the caterer for human and bellowine animality that feeling quite superlatively elevated and being somewhat somniculous, I was propensed to an early coucher, and requested that he indigitate to me a cubicular department, or dormitory, in which I might enjoy somniferous quietude. I elicited from my host an obstruction to cause my expiration when the calligation of the night was yielding to the clarity of the remiant exhortive solar sphere. Prior to decumbency on my couch, I submitted my pedal and crural organs to a defecation by a copious lavation with medicated saponaceous substurgence. This pedaluvi and ablution, though I yet suffered a slight vellication in my femoral organs, 
gave me a proclivity for an indulgence of my somnolency without intercision. In the matin, according to Paction, the obergist exuscitated me at the first canorous peal of the chanticleer. After the customary matutinal manal and facial ablution and abstersion, and capital pectination, and a very satisfactory impletion of my epigastric receptacle, I asked for the supputation with him, and having duly adjusted the same, I resumed ambulatory incession. The ceruleous canopy was merging into fulgidity from the ascending rayonant Phoebus. Every entity about me seemed to revel in universal resuscitation. I performed my quotidian locomotion for several diurnal revolutions, witnessing a multiplicity of occurrences homologous to those already specified. One day, when the solar sphere had culminated, I, being much exantilated from continuous deambulation, gave way to a recubation under an isolated multiramos umbrageous tree, attiguous to the trail, for the purpose of exercising my masticators upon the contents of my viaticum. Having furnished refossilation to my system recumbent on my dorsal part, I viewed the plumous tenants of the air in their evolutions among the ramifications of the tree and the elusive mirage in the distance. Having discalciated, I perforated my recrudescent and attrited pedal organs with an iatroleptical serrate, and then, becoming profligated with somnolency, I relapsed into a postprandial siesta. Schnell, for that was the cognomination of my canine companion and presidiary, had vigilated. I was, however, soon suscitated by an electrical detonation from the septentrional part of the horizon. As soon as my ophthalmic organs had undergone petrifaction, I realised that nubiferous gales were in operation, agglomerating a most ominous and impendent cumuserostratus thunderhead. The welkin was rapidly obnubilating and tenebrosity amplifying. The crispations and furcations of the fulgurations became vivid, and the fulminations horrisonous. In a brevity of time there was a copious precipitation of pluvious globules, which subjected me and Schnell to thorough matefaction. The arroyos assumed such ampliations as might be instilled a local torrential cataclysm. Aqueous domination prevailed on earth. Igneous potency and fulminous reverberations predominated in the nubiferous regions, and a resistless ventosity maintained horrendous bowation in the atmosphere. The fulgurations communicated their igneous potency to a rancho sans paratonnerres, setting in it flagration, terminating an entire incineration. Being untenanted, no one fell a prey to cremation. I and Schnell had to engage in the transilience and trination of several arroyos, which greatly augmented the ponderosity of our envelopes. Ultimately, as the day began to advesperate, but prior to the cadence of Phoebus, with pedal envelopes and the inferior portion of my femoral habiliment subjected to quite an illutation, I arrived at an adobe chalet. Anthracitic and ligneous combustibles were deposited in a spacious calefactor and extended with an allumette, giving me an opportunity for torrefaction or divaporation. I was soon summoned to the refectory by tintinabula reverberations where I found ample senatory refreshments. Tenebrosity having by this time encircled our moiety of this mundane sphere, I soon sank into the gremium of Morpheus. The day subsequent to the proselus vesper on which I effectuated the arafaction or calefaction of my habiliments was not very inservient to the progress of a pedestrian viator. It is true... The atmospheric regions, at first subnuvula, soon became anubilated, and old Sol did not radiate his sudorific caloric so potently as on the Hestanal day, but the roads had, in some places, become lutulent and somewhat clarty, presenting great defaciliation to my incessant velocity on account of the viscosity of the surface. In consequent my frequent stoppages, on account of the luterious and salubrous condition of the trail, I had ample opportunity to exercise my optics upon the aspects of the circumjacent regions. 
the sinuosities of the vales, the rupolary canons, the titanic scabrous nival crested Ionian mountain peaks, the ferocity of the terrious surface, pertingent to the aqueous meanders, excited in me the greatest obluctation. I arrived one day at a place somewhat multivious, and there being no miliaries or odometrous stones, I soon became disoriented. In the course of my deambulations, my vision was regaled with an oxiduous floriferous savanna, having in its septentrional, oriental, and austral sections a slight subsidence. Its terrious surface was a perfect chesm, wholly non scatebrous. In my transcursion to a designated point, my attention was arrested by the audition of a very puissant sibilation in great proximity to Schnell. He gave a subterraneous resilience. By cherry perscrutation, I perceived a physilingual, batrocophagus, anguine creeple, a crotalus, circularly recumbent. His cutaneous envelope was squamous, cuprius, and folded. His caudal extremity was cuspidated with a corneous apex. Schnell made a temerarious supersalient assault upon him, but received such a cicerary upon his rhinal protrusion as immediately induced incessant jactitation. Tumefaction with ineffable celerity became visible in his physical organisation. Being somewhat seant in toxicology and pantagruelism, I administered to him, in the utmost brevity of time, alexoterics, antiphlogistics, and other pharmacy. This treatment produced immediate detumescence and revalescence. Though this assault upon him did not prove exitial yet in his resilience from the dipsas, he suffered the exarticulation or rather the subluxation of his sinistral crural organ, which in his subsequent circumcursations extorted the most streperous ejaculations. He soon, however, enjoyed complete sanation, and was freed from every traumatic vestige, and relieved of all osteoscope by nepenthe and antalgics. His sebastral vitality has, however, since terminated. Fritz, a Castrensian acolythist of mine, an ardent lover of synergetics and occupation, made a terraplegistic venatorial tour, and induced Schnell to accompany him. On the succeeding matin, as they were apropinquating a lepidius and scopulous elevation, Schnell, in his circumcursations, ventre et terre, was elected by the fumet of a cache. He there, Habnab, met a hirsute, hippophagus, sarcophagus, ichthyophagus, mellifagus, insectivorous, vermivorous, frugivorous, and anthropophagus, ursine quadruped. A terrific sanguinary synoctomachy ensued. In the circumgyrations of the battalions, Schnell rendered Bruin excordate, but Bruin being unguiculated, seized Schnell with one paw by the neb and submaxillary appendage in the hyomental region, and with the other, grasped his capillo's double integument in the lateral part, and almost exenterated him, and quite sudulated him. By an extra conatus, Schnell effected his eluctation from Bruin, but through hors de combat, his claudication from the arena of concertation or obluctation prompted the most puissant ululations. The lancinations, maugre all epulotic, catagmatic, and cicatricive appliances, and all available asiurgical and chirurgical skill, sfacillated. Interosseal and cervical intergescence induced angina, terminating in lethality. He was contumulated farently. After hospitating for an octidial period with a vaquero, I entered into a pactitious contract with him. During my tyrosony as vaquero, though not a novice in equitancy and riding tantivy yet in segregating and corralling macrocornus bovines for an ustion, in omnium gatherum aggregations or rodeos and in abgregating mavericks, my equestrian acrobatic feats vaulting from the dorsal part of bucking broncos was, for a time, truly, mirabile visu. Eventually, in view of the avalation or evanescence of the estival and autumnal seasons, 
and the approximation of brumal gelidity and cadent niveous particles, and moreover, being ruriculist rather than an opidon, I entered in a paction with an oxiduous proprietor of a section of terra firma. In conclusion, I will say I have today felt somewhat writative, and hence my present epistolizing is voluminous as Thucydides and strung out like the caudal appendage of Alcibiades' canine. I have epistographized much, postulated emendatory criticisms here and there, and added so much paraphrastical marginalia that verily redolet lucerne, with a customary comity, Ivan.